welcome to another episode of Sustainment TV. I'm your host, David McDonald, and before we begin today's video, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It will help us to continue to grow and improve upon what we do. But without further delay, let's get right into today's video. For today's video, I wanted to feature a conversation that I was able to have with a couple of real estate professionals concerning some of the basics of first-time home buyers. All right, Sustainment TV viewers, we have two of the top uh, real estate professionals in Northeast Florida. Uh, I'd like to welcome Elizabeth and Kayla. Uh, so I really appreciate you, all, um, you taking some time out of your day to be with us. Um, uh, let's start out, uh, tell us a little bit who, you know, about who you are and your area of specialty. So my name is Elizabeth Elliott. I'm a real estate agent, Army veteran, living up here in Jacksonville, St. Augustine area of Florida, and I specialize in residential real estate. And, and this is my lender partner, Kayla. Hi, I'm Kayla. I'm born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida, mom of three. I'm actually a mortgage broker, so I can help you on the lending side. Yes. So the difference between the two of us is I help you find the property that works for you, and then she helps you secure the funding to yes. buy the property. Okay. Gotcha. Now, uh, I shared with you, Elizabeth, a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago. I was talking to a group of our recent college grads just, uh, this previous spring semester, and, um, you know, they, they seemed a little, you know, like doubtful in terms of being able to own a home in the near future. Uh, what advice could you give someone, you know, in that mindset, you know, feeling like, you know, the interest rates are crazy, um, you know, and, and of course, you know, we know that it'll depend on, you know, what the cost of living is in your area, but what, what kind of advice could, uh, could you guys offer them? Well, the number one thing I tell first time home buyers is your first home isn't your forever home. And the important thing is getting into your first home. So you'll talk to a lender, you'll find out what your pre-approval comes back at. I mean, it might be $100,000. Um, and they're also gonna be able to give you a game plan to maybe increase that pre-approval so that you can get closer to something of what you're wanting. But I mean, for example, I wanted my first home to be a single family, three bedroom, two bath detached not attached to anything and guess what i was a first lieutenant or a second lieutenant actually and i couldn't afford it you know on my own salary i ended up getting a townhouse in williamsburg virginia actually toano i couldn't even afford to live in williamsburg it was in the outskirts of williamsburg but i got a new construction townhome um i got into that property and then what what, what that does is it, it's a long-term savings account that appreciates and you can either keep it as a rental or you can sell it and you have that forced savings that appreciates, you know, three to eight percent a year, depending on the location. Um, and now you can take that equity and put it into your next home or just keep it as a rental property. So I just think it's really important to start rather than waiting to, you know, till all the conditions are perfect. Yeah, and I would just add on to that as far as the lending side, I think anything with money is scary, especially a college student or anybody that's kind of young. So, but it is, it's one of the biggest investments you're going to do probably in your life, but it's not your last and forever. So mm -hmm. I think having an initial conversation with a professional, you know, real estate agent and a lender and just at least having a conversation because a lot of people don't really know what all it entails. So until you kind of dive deep mm -hmm. and figure out your personal situation, you're really not ever going to know unless you ask, yeah. right? So I think having that initial conversation and really trying to figure out what your goals are because we both can help in that area financially and kind of property wise, like what you're looking for and then have goals for you. If it's not right now, it might be later. But if you never have that initial conversation with somebody because you're scared, then you're you're always going to assume yeah. that you don't qualify for anything. Yeah. <laughs> and the other piece of it is interest rates. People want to wait for these interest rates to drop and then, you know, prices to drop. I mean, historically, we're at like an average, right? A historical average is like seven point something. Um, so we're slightly below a historical average. I don't think rates are going to be in the twos and threes, like maybe even in my own lifetime. Um, 
And so waiting for that to happen is kind of silly. And you also have to think about like prices and rates are like a sliding scale. So when rates come down, people who are selling their homes, they realize that they can jack the price up. So it's like timing the market is silly. I think a lot of people are using that as an excuse to not get pre-approved. They're like, oh, I'm just gonna wait for rates to come down. Well, they have credit card debt that they need to pay off. They have savings that they need to build up. There's all these other things that they should be doing in the meantime that they're using the rates as an excuse to not do those things. And when the time finally comes where they're like, okay, I'm ready. Well, they didn't pay off their credit cards. They made a couple of silly decisions with spending. So I think getting, getting yourself financially ready is the most important thing. And um, then also, so, to kind of touch on that too, if you're not educated, you go to school to get educated, it's the same thing when you're buying a home as far as the financial aspect of it, you know, find someone that will take the time to educate you from start to finish. Yeah. If you're working with a lender and they're not explaining everything to you and not diving deep to figure out what's good for you with rates. I mean, I have a conversation every day with every single buyer I have, they have this magic number that they think they need to be, you know, at as far as rate to make it work for them. But when I dive in and share where the current rate is, and if they buy it down, they see the difference. Sometimes it might not make sense to spend that money. So then they're like shocked, like, oh my gosh, this actually can work. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, everyone has this mentality of a specific number when really and truly it's like what works for you in your situation. Yeah. So if you're not even going to have a conversation and get educated early on, then, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know when you'll buy. <laughs> also credit scores too. I think a lot of people are like, I'm going to wait for my credit score to be 750 or higher before I do it. And sometimes that, that number doesn't make a huge difference. And, um, and also as a first time home buyer, like we haven't even talked about that piece of it. A lot of the people that we're speaking to now are first time home buyers. I think that's like close to 40% of people buying a yeah. home these days are first timers. Awesome. There are so many programs. That's why I wanted Kayla to be on this with me. There are so many programs out there for first time home buyers that I can't use because I already have bought a home. Uh, but you've got down payment assistance yeah, programs. Yeah, grant program. I mean, there's so many different programs. We have like a book of programs, especially being a broker. I work with 20 different lenders. so. We have something for everyone, depending on your situation. Um, and if it's something you don't qualify for at the time, we can give you a guideline on how to get there at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's like, you know, I know, uh, I know Elizabeth and I, we've talked about having, you know, another session, you know, in reference to, to veterans and, and, and the things that they have access to. Uh, thank you for your service, by the way. Um, now you mentioned a couple of things about pre-approval letter and credit score and whatnot. So would you say a pre-approval letter, letter is a blank check or how would you, how would you um, <laughs> simplify that for a first time um, buyer? How would you, what would you say? So, <laughs> yeah. so basically when agents refer a buyer over to me, the first step is getting pre-approved. That essentially is your letter. So your agent knows that they can take you around for a specific price point. So what we do in that area is we dive into your income, your assets, your credit score, there's several things that we're looking at and we talk to you on and verify with you to see where you're qualified. Um, and then even in that situation, there's always, we give an open value to like, hey, you're qualified for here, but if you're looking for a specific payment, then we dive deeper. So that's really, it's a long, process in the beginning, having that conversation, but it's actually very quick too. Mm -hmm. It's just one of the most important pieces, but yes, that letter essentially is your check mark that you are qualified to go look at properties yeah. within specific, specific parameters that we've spoken to your agent about. And we edu you know, we tell your agent what you're qualified for, what type of homes you want to look for, that type of thing. Yeah. If you don't have a pre-approval letter and you go talk to a real estate agent, people will come to my open house and want to buy that house. And I go, okay, what do you pre-approve for? Like, do you have a pre-approval letter? And they go, oh, well, we haven't done that yet. And it's like, it, I feel like it's shopping blind yeah. because, or it's like going to the mall without a credit card in your pocket. Like you have, you have no money. You have no idea if you can buy this house. Right. You know, I have people walking in, like, we're really interested. We want to see this house. And I will graciously show them that house, but then they get their pre-approval back and there's no way they can qualify for that home. Right. And so what what I try and tell them is we don't want to get your hopes up and we also don't want to waste anybody's time. I, de I don't want to waste my own time. Mm -hmm. but I definitely don't want to waste anybody else's or have any hearts get broken. So the most important thing, once you've decided, okay, this is the year for me, even if 
like you're not going to buy till the end of next year, still talk to a lender now mm-hmm. because they're going to be able to say, here's where you're at. It's like working on your PT test. <laughs> here's where your numbers are now. Here's what your goal is, what you want it to be by the end of the year. Yeah. It's like getting a trainer basically. Yeah. And she's going to be able to help you get as financially fit as you can be so that she can always redo your pre-approval. I think it, how many days is it it's, it's good for 90 days, essentially in the beginning. It's only because credit expires kind of within that window. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can, we're, but we're having conversations from that initial phone call all the time yeah. from there. It's just that taking that first step of education, getting pre-approved, and then they feel a lot more comfortable kind of after that. And then they're texting and calling all the time. But yeah, you can always get it updated after 90 days as well. And that's a very easy thing once we have your information. Like as and, a- You know, it's it, uh, it's funny you, you mentioned that about the, the time period. I know um, as I was retiring, I got caught in that 90 day window. It's like, oh, my income's getting ready to change. But um, lucky for me, I was able to, to leverage an, an asset I had to kind of cover the thing yeah. that I wasn't able to show on paper anymore. But, but not right. a, that's a good point. Um, okay, so- so as far as a first time home buyer goes, um, use a realtor, not use a realtor. You know, you know how sometimes people try to, you know, maybe cut corners, you know, for sale by owner. Let me, let's just uh, find a closing attorney. And so what would you say in terms of why to use a realtor? Why would it, why would it be important? This is, this is a really good question because if you aren't in real estate, you maybe don't know this, but as a buyer, a real estate agent costs you $0 because the seller of the home pays all the real estate commission fees for both sides. So they're paying their agent to sell their house. They're also paying the the agent that brings a buyer to the home. They're paying that one as well. So sometimes buyers, and I didn't know this either. I When I bought my home down here before I became an agent, I was like, I walked into an open house. I wanted that house. It was, it was at the height of the market. There was multiple families in that home. And I just walked up to the listing agent who was hosting the open house. I said, I want to buy this house and she got to have both sides of the deal um which was great for her happy birthday for her but um <laughs> but i thought that it was gonna like save me money down the road no it, yeah. it didn't i mean it doesn't it didn't cost me anything and really i was going into the now i look back she did a great job but um she, i was going in basically unrepresented because she became a transaction agent where she's just basically handling that transaction but from beginning to end making sure it gets to the closing table I didn't have what's called a single agent, which is what I am, where I fully represent that buyer from beginning to end and their their interests. So if you're a buyer, you really should hire an agent because it, first of all, it's going to cost you nothing. And it's we are a fiduciary to you, so like just like a lawyer or a doctor, right? We have full loyalty and um, we full disclosure with you. We um, duty and respect all of those things. We hold all, everything confidential. Um, and let's say the sellers like tells us by chance, I really got to sell this house and I'll take this number. Well, I will turn around and tell my buyer, Hey, like they really got to sell and we can offer a lot less than that. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I was a transaction agent, I wouldn't be able to do that because my goal would be to, to take care of the money piece. Whereas as a single agent, my job is to take care of the buyer and get them the best deal possible. So I think that that would be really silly. And I wish I could go back and like tisk tisk myself because I was uneducated. Mm -hmm. But so many people don't know that as a buyer, a real estate professional costs you nothing. Yeah. Yep. As a seller. (laughs) That's a, that's good to know. Um, And I, and I guess the fiduciary aspect of it, I I didn't, I didn't realize that. Um, So and this is for either one of you what would you if you had to name one piece of it what's more what would you consider more important monthly income debt to income ratio or credit score gosh if, if you hard. had to pick one i mean i would say credit score because that's your qualifying that's the number that we're looking at but it all kind of goes together it's hard to pick one because And getting that credit score, you know, your debts and your income have a lot to do with qualifying too. So as a lender, I don't think I can pick one. I think they're all just as important. And it depends on the kind of the price of the home that you're looking for um, as well. So there's several factors and I don't think I can choose one. So I think if you're a first time home buyer and you, you don't know anything about this, I think what I can give you as advice is if you have credit cards, keep them under 30%. Okay. That will help your credit score. And then if you don't have a job yet after college, 
let's get an offer letter and see where your income lies. And then that will definitely help us guide you and what you qualify for. Oh, okay, and so would you? Yes. I, okay. so I, made this mistake, I made this mistake right before I bought my home here in Florida. I was like, I'm going to pay off my car and I'm going to pay off my student loans. <laughs> yes. Well, guess what? I was thinking, yes, I got like some good army pay and I went and paid off my car and I paid off my student loans. I had had those student loans for 10 years and I'd had that car for five. I paid it off early so that I could buy my house. Well, silly me, I closed two of my longest standing accounts. Yeah. Now my credit history mm. length, my length of account yeah. average dropped significantly and my credit score dropped yeah. a bunch when I paid off my car and I paid off my student loans. I was like, what the F? Sorry, yeah. because I paid stuff off. Why is my credit score going down? This doesn't make That's any sense. That's why it's so hard to say because it really depends on the person, honestly. It depends on what they have right now and where they want to go to what I would say to them with those three components that you brought up. Um, but yeah, as far as debts, paying them off, you know, we educate you. If you pay off a credit card, don't close it yeah, don't because close you want to keep them as long as possible because that helps build your credit. So. Yeah. I wish I had just talked to a lender. Yeah. <laughs> just if you're, if you have any questions, talk to a lender. Yeah. If you're even thinking about buying a house, talk to a lender. I almost think talking to a lender is more important than talking to a realtor. I think so. That's the yeah, first step. Yeah. You can't like people will come to me and they go, okay, I want to buy this house. I'm like, can we talk to a lender? That's the, right. that's the first step mm -hmm. is getting pre-qualified or figuring out what you need to do to get pre-qualified. Cause for me, by the time you get to me, we're, sh we're shopping. Yeah. I'm like your personal shopper assistant, but I can't help you create the funds to get yeah. that home. And some people don't even have credit scores when they call me. So that's a whole other monster. Um, but yeah, so it really just depends. Those three factors can be different for every single person. Okay, so, okay. So just as a hypothetical, if you have two people, identical credit score, identical income, but the debt to income ratio is different. Who would you say has who who is more lendable? The person with the lower or the higher debt uh, debt to income? The one with the one with the lower would qualify for a conventional loan. There's several. Lo there's also several loan products too. So you know, if the one with the higher one is over a certain threshold, they would still qualify. But the one with the lower debt ratio would qualify for you know a conventional product per okay. se. Yeah. All right. Okay. So part of Part of the home buying process, you know, you've pre-qualified, you're out with your home shopper. Um, <laughs> and, and I, and I guess in reference to planning one's um, monthly payment, what's the what's the easiest way to, to, to describe that for someone? Yeah, so principal and interest, and then you have taxes and insurance. So when I talk to my buyers, um, I basically walk through that with them based on the sales price, where the rate is, all of those factors, and then I always educate them on, hey, you know, you're pre-approved for 500,000 or 300,000, but also it depends on the property because the taxes and insurance have a big part of that too. Mm -hmm. So I always say, you know, you're pre-approved here, but always call me if you find three properties that you love and let's chat through the taxes and insurance because it's based on those properties and I can pull the tax bill and I can do a calculation based on, you know, estimated insurance to see if that still works. But yes, those are mm -hmm. all the factors that go into a payment. Mm -hmm. So, so um, in that in that same uh, analogy, so HOA fees could would factor into that also. Yep, if you're buying a condo or a townhome or an area where you have an HOA, so typically like residential neighborhoods, they have an HOA. We're going to apply that towards your payment for qualifying purposes, right. but it's not necessarily paid monthly. So you would pay it however your neighborhood's set up if it's yearly or quarterly. But townhomes, condos typically are a monthly fee, and we would get that amount as well once we pull the property information. Yes. Okay. Another important piece of the monthly payment thing is your pre-approval could come back higher than you expected, but then that, when you find out what that payment is on yeah. a $500,000 house, it might be a lot more than what you're used to for a rental. And so just because your pre-approval comes back here, but the payment is also here, you might not want to spend that much. So you want to always talk to your lender too, like, I want to keep my, my payment around, da, da, da they'll be able to tell you more of what you want your pre-approval That's the be. education piece. I mean, it's yeah. an entire, you It's know. like going to, I did this, I made this mistake. I went and test drove a Tesla. I was like, this is the best. Then they'll come back and tell me what the payment on that Tesla is going to be over a thousand dollars a month. I'm like, that's dumb. So don't go test drive a car if you don't know what right. you want the, the monthly payment to be around. Yeah. Definitely find out what you want your monthly payment to be. And then you can kind of work backwards from there. Yes. I have, um, 
and maybe you have too, but I've had friends who, you know, for one reason or another, they end up having to rent, you know, long term. And it's like they're in a place that um, says, says a two bedroom, whatever, and they're paying fifteen hundred dollars a month. And, you know, they they they've they've, um, they've paid that amount for four years, even though, you know, their credit sucks. So how could what, what would that person be able to do to make themselves lendable if they already know their debt to income is high, but obviously they don't, they don't want to be homeless. So they're they're doing whatever they can to maintain that higher rent payment when they could be in a comparable um, ownership situation for twelve hundred. You know, yeah. obviously it's cheaper, but, you know, they have issues going on. I mean, what what would be their starting point? Um, so what were the issues? I'm sorry, I missed that. Just no, 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 not, um, no. Oh, higher debt ratios? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's where we'd have a conversation. They would tell me up front, hey, I have this payment currently that I'm renting right now, but I'm super uncomfortable with that. A lot of buyers um, with a lender will open up a lot more than they do with a real estate agent. So when I have that conversation, they might not tell her, hey, I have a lot of debt, you know? And then when I pre-approve them, I'm like, they have a lot of debt and we are going to have to kind of work through this. But yeah, if they're renting and the payments way up here and they want to be down here, we would do an application. I'd look at their debts, see where they are, lower to where that payment needs to be and tell them what they're approved for. And if their debt ratio is too high, then we would give them a game plan on what to do. But honestly, it depends on where that ratio is, because again, we do have so many programs that, yeah. I mean, you'd be shocked. We have programs where we can do under a 580 credit. We have so many programs. So it's having that conversation where they are comfortable um, and then looking at the debts and kind of getting them to that payment. Okay, okay. Um, and, and, and you guys experience with uh, first time homeowners, do you ever have anyone that buys a multifamily like right off the bat, like a duplex or something? Yes. Yeah. I would recommend, I would recommend that. Yes. Yeah. I was telling, I was telling David on the phone last week, like if I find a first time home buyer who maybe has a small family or hasn't had kids or wife or anything like that yet. And they're just like a single person go for it. If you're okay with living in a multi-unit yeah. space, because now when you turn around to buy your next primary residence, you own multiple rental properties right off the bat rather yep. than just one. Yeah, it's and you can so have smart. that one, so say it's a duplex, you can have that one and then the other one's rented out and you already have rental income coming in. Yep. And in most cases, what I've seen is that rental will actually pay for the entire thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, a, I tell all my kids, I literally try to school them every day. I'm like, y'all are getting a duplex yep. right after you graduate. I'm gonna help you do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm teaching them those things right now. I wish somebody told me. Yeah, yeah. and tell yeah. myself, back even when I was living in Virginia I should have bought a duplex yeah because now I'd have two rentals up in Virginia and and now I don't and silly me yeah so I definitely recommend that for sure for a first home scenario yeah. where you don't really care about having someone living next to you that's yeah. renting you know the older you get the more income you get the more house you want the more bills you get it's harder to do that it's right now. just way easier it's, it's funny it's like the older you get the more educated you get it's like wasted on us because yeah. what we want to do is give that all to the younger people who can really benefit from these programs mm -hmm. yeah. and you just changed the rules with FHA multifamily like this. So place. if you're moving in and you're not a first time home buyer for a duplex, you can put as low as 5% down. And then FHA, if you buy it, it's three and a half percent. So there's, it's really cool. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So duplex. That's a, that's a big change. And it's like, you know, I don't, you know, it's almost like I, I asked myself, what was I thinking? You know, First time I bought a home, but it's like, like you know, like you said, Elizabeth, about the, the, the education as time goes on. Oh no, right? Yeah, and you also don't know who to ask when you're that young, and you're just you're, and when you're young, you're listening to everyone around you talk, which is other people who don't own a home. <laughs> other when I when I bought my townhome in Virginia, I think I got mine at a two point seven five rate, mm -hmm. and everyone around me was like, "Don't buy, you're gonna move in two years. You're in the army, you're gonna move every two years." Great investment. <laughs> um, all even all the officers I worked with were saying, Don't, "I wouldn't buy. Why are you buying?" Yeah. And I look back and I go, "They were so silly to be saying that stuff to me," um, <laughs> because it was so smart of me to do that, yeah. and I was taking a chance on myself. Also. VA loan is the best loan on the market that you yeah. can get. So I had a two point something rate with a zero down VA loan. Heck no yeah. yeah. No, yeah, no mortgage insurance. I mean, it was like the smartest decision I could have made. And I'm proud of myself for being 20. I was 27 or something when I did it. But 
I mean, gosh, I'm kind of mad that I was listening to people around me. And also like the talking heads on TV will always tell you it's not a good time to buy. The rates are high. Go back and watch 2016, 2017, 20. You'll find talking heads from all the last 10 years telling you it's a bad time to buy Mm -hmm. a house. And then really it's all the people looking back on their equity of the last four or five years sitting on like their house Mm -hmm. has doubled in equity. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Obviously, we've talked about real estate agents, we've talked about lending agents um, and brokers and whatnot. Um, what are there any other additional resources um, that buyers, you know, could or should be using, you know, during that whole process? I mean, like, are there are there any um, are there any websites you recommend or or like uh, community resources that one may you know could go to? Or I mean, what I would say is if you connect with a real estate agent, mm-hmm. you can ask them because a lot of realtors and you know mortgage professionals they do first time home buyer seminars. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could just have them at least connect with one or look online. There's first time home buyer seminars that a lot of people put on. So in the area, mm-hmm. you can maybe search that or look on Facebook mm-hmm. um, if you're uncomfortable with reaching out to a realtor directly. But I would say a seminar would be something that I would probably want to sit through, okay. whether it's first time home buyer or just investor, you know, just to kind of get that education started um, mm-hmm. and then having a conversation. Yeah. I think just be, uh, even if you're a young person, we're all Goog- We use the search bar and Instagram as Google now, uh-huh. right? So just go and put like if whatever your city is, Virginia Beach Realtor and find one, you know, and just do your own research. It's who you vibe with the best yeah. and just send them a, shoot them a DM. Hey, do you have a buyer's guide? I guarantee you they do if they're any, if they're worth their weight. So ask them for their home buyer's guide. And a lot of us, we have a buyer's guide and a first time home buyer's guide. And it literally will have maybe 10 page e-guide. I have one on my page right now that I send. It walks you through step by step from the time we meet for the first time all the way through when we close on your house to what you should be doing after we close Mm -hmm. on your house. Like it literally walks you through the process. And that's just a good place to start. And just like your conversation with a lender, it's just a starting point because some people just don't know what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the questions will come from that first conversation. conversation, So the important thing is to have a conversation. It's the jumping off point to know what questions to ask. So like doing an app with her, you may have no questions for her until you do the app. I'll have so many. Yeah. (laughs) Once you've (laughs) you've had that first conversation, then, then the questions start to come like well what about this what about this but when you are brand new you don't even know what to ask yeah so i think just, just building a relationship with somebody in your area too like that you can establish a friendship with even yeah. if you're not ready like that's our job is to educate people and help them through this process so i tell anyone that's not ready if they reach out to me like text me anytime listen yeah. i know you're not ready right now i'm not trying to pressure you to buy because it's not right for you mm-hmm. but text me call me like yeah you will come back to us and it'll be great and even if any of that none of that like what we said doesn't work call us and i we have partners all over the country like i have realtor agent referral partners up in virginia beach everywhere all over the world call or text one of us and we'll set you up with somebody we know and trust and that that was another question i had for uh for for both of you um are you able to um to uh facilitate deals in more than just in more than just your area i mean i i can help with referrals all over the country Hmm. Uh, so i always say if you're in california call me like i have people who are just have a question and i help them all over the country there's nothing that stops that conversation from happening and then i will just i'll reach out to one of my referral partners and do it an introduction and say this is their situation can you take care of them like like they're your friend yeah. like their family and i and so for me so we're in florida however we work with a multitude of lenders and i can call the rep and say hey do you have someone in the area another broker like myself that they can work with so we have connections yeah <laughs> last question and you I'm, I'm pretty sure you may may or may not be able to answer it um i know we're, we're early in the 2024 do you expect rates to drop at all? I knew that was going to come. Oh my gosh. Every, <laughs> every day I have this question. And what I would are the be rates? like, I'd be on an island if I knew these answers. You right, know? Right. I mean, they're projected. We keep hearing, you know, second quarter, third quarter. Nobody really knows when they're truly going to come down. We've seen like a drop and then it kind of goes back up and it's staying steady. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are projected to come down this year. Somewhere, you know, we're hearing fives somewhere. They're saying by the end of the year, but, you know, they were saying in the summer and then it's pushed down to the end of the year. So it's like, 
Yeah. Again, if we knew the answers, we'd all be millionaires. I'd be a millionaire, not here. Um, but yeah, I'm just looking for more of like a steady, um, consistent flow. Um, and I can't wait for that. But yeah, I feel like it is around the corner because it really has kind of gone up and down in like that really good threshold that people love. Um, and it's picked up a lot, actually. So hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, right, but again, right. like we said, waiting on rates is Don't not wait on a rate. waiting on the rates is not the answer. It's right. getting financially healthy is the answer. Date the rate, marry the house with it. That's awesome. I will definitely be reaching back out. Um, do y'all have any final thoughts um, before I let you guys go? Um, if you have questions, I mean, yeah. can you put our info put below? Put us put our info in the comment or yeah. absolutely in the in the That's video description. I'll, I'll get I'll get all your information. Absolutely. Yeah, and thank you so much for having us. Yeah. And, and, and um, have them type their questions below. Yeah. And if we can do another one. We absolutely will. We could always do part two. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks for tuning into today's video. I hope something was said that was helpful and informative. Elizabeth and Kayla's information is listed in the video description. If you're in the market for a home, or if you're going to be in the market for a home in the near future, feel free to reach out to them. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video.